My name is Jordan Savory and I'm an elite athlete training for the 2024 Olympics. Started running at the age of five, my mom put me in track and field as a kid. She also put me in a bunch of other sports when I was young. And I think what made me very passionate about track and field was that it gave me a sense of freedom. Um, it's an individual sport. It allowed me to focus on myself and to push my body to its limits. And I think that's what I really like about the sport. So I initially started track and field at, in LaSalle at Riverside Park. I switched to St. Laurent Select to have a better coaching style and to improve in my sport. I made that decision. And honestly, the Piste Ben le duc is my home. I train here about five times a week. I've had my worst race ever at this track. I've experienced my best race ever at this track. I've run the fastest that I've ever run here. And there's a lot of history on this track. After I made Team Canada, I had one of, at the time, I would say it was one of the worst experiences in my sport. I was diagnosed with patella alta, and I found out only after two years of not doing my sport that I needed to have surgery. At that point, it was very hard for me to digest that because I was already out for almost two years, and then I was told that I need to have this huge surgery. Jordan, she had patella alta, so once she, she received the operation, it took her almost about a year, year to heal. So she wasn't competing for, uh, for anybody. And then she started doing a lot of physiotherapy, and then after she got back into it and she was uh, recruited by, by McGill, she got into McGill, so she competed for McGill and Saint Laurent. And then once she got healthy, she started to be stronger than ever. But there was something in me that I was too passionate to quit my sport. I didn't want to end like that. I didn't want this injury to take, to take over, to run my world. So I made the decision that I was going to continue. In 2018, I got accepted into McGill, and that is where everything started to come together. I started training again, I started to jog. My trainings were very slow. They were very progressive. I didn't push myself too much because I knew that in my sport, everything takes time with patience, things will come. Her focus is unusual for an athlete. Uh, it, it, I would say it's unusual for general population, but it's, she has a lot of the characteristics in terms of her personality that you can see in the highest level of competition. Um, like I had the opportunity to travel to, with many like top level national teams, uh, and I was able to kind of be around a lot of those athletes that perform that are the best in the world, and like personality wise and and and, and like the, her 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 drive is the same as you can see them like there are athletes that will do anything they need to do to get to that where they want to go and this is something you see in jordan she's all she's very involved in her training this is another thing like she's not just on for the ride like she she actually wants to understand why she's doing things she wants to make sure that she's doing everything she can at any point in time. Sometimes I feel I need to slow her down because she wants too much too early and, and we need to kind of go one step at a time. Uh, but it's, uh, I think it's, uh, she has a lot of those characteristics that you can see in, very rarely in the top level athletes. Right now, Jordan is looking forward to, like I said, a lot of more international camps, uh, more competitions, but with these competitions, with the traveling, it takes money. And unfortunately, um, Jordan, Jordan does work a little bit. She has a little side gig that she does tie-dye to do her fundraising. Um, I help her a lot, a lot as well, but un 
realistically speaking, it costs thousands of dollars. To get funding, you need to be identified, and we have different levels of identification. There's a provincial identification in Quebec that allows Jordan to get some money. Uh, it's not enough. It just covers some fees, but it's really not a huge amount. My goals are actually very big for the upcoming season next year. I am planning on making it to Canada Games in 2022 in all of my events, 100 meters, 200 meters and long jump. Um, future goals are definitely the Olympics in 2024. We're in the right path and uh, this year looks like it's going to be a good year. Uh, she's running very well in training. A lot of the things, like one, a lot of things we do, we immediately see the effect in training right now, which is kind of unusual for a, an athlete her age. They tend to be much, much more set in their ways. Like it's hard to break patterns. Uh, it's, it's becoming easier and easier to teach you things. Uh, so I, I think it's very positive, and uh, I think three or four years from now we'll be at a much, much higher level. So to help financially, people, I will be organizing fundraisers in the future and people can help donate to those fundraisers, which would help me a lot. As well, if companies would like to take chances on me, I have what it takes to be an Olympic athlete. I'm just missing that financial portion to help me progress in my sport, to help me compete with the best across the world. I also have a small business, a small um, tie-dye page that I, have done by myself to help fund my track and field journey. So if you would like to follow me on that page, um, it's called Dyes and Designs on Instagram, dyes.and.designs. If you would like to follow my track and field journey as well on Facebook, I have an athlete page. It's my full name, Jordan Savory. And as well on Instagram, uh, you can follow my track journey at Jordan underscore Savory and see you in 2024.